In this video I would like to talk about the two-factor theory which was developed by Frederick Herzberg. It is a little bit criticized theory but still the idea behind it that the two factors is really interesting and worth examining. So at first I will give you example of how we usually think about satisfaction on, a, on let's say on some workplace. So how we usually think about satisfaction. So usually imagine that there is some one axis. So let's say that this is the axis and on the right side we have satisfaction, uh, satisfaction and on the left side we have some dissatisfaction. So here we have a this and let me use the different color. You will see later why. So we have a dissatisfaction. And of course somewhere in the middle there is some, let's say, there is some neutral. So here we have some neutral. And now we think that if we would ask, let's say, 100 employees if they are dissatisfied or satisfied and what is causing their satisfaction or dissatisfaction, of course they would mention something like uh, pay is important for us, then there is some job security, job security, job security, then let's say there is some responsibility, responsibility. And now essentially if an employee would tell you that, well, I'm slightly dissatisfied, so our employee is somewhere over here in his satisfaction with his work. Now, if we would increase the pay, now if we would increase the pay, our presumption is that this employee would move somewhere to the right on this our axis. If we would increase, let's say, job security, again, this our employee would move a little bit to the, to the right. And finally, if we would increase the responsibility, then again, we would have some movement towards satisfaction. This is how we usually think about the satisfaction with a uh, job. However, now comes the two-factor theory by Frederick Herzberg. Look at our axis. I'm gonna draw it differently. Because the reason or, or the, the fact proposed by Herzberg is that these two are separated. So we need to separate them and create two distinct ones. So the first axis is the dissatisfaction. So this is going to be our dissatisfaction axis. Dissatisfaction. And then the other one is going to be our satisfaction axis. So here we have our satisfaction and from the beginning it might not make uh, a really clear sense what makes so big difference when we separate them or where we put them together and here are our neutral states so here we are neutral neutral and here we are neutral as well however we are not just being neutral we are neutral in dissatisfaction in this case and neutral with satisfaction in this case so we are in two ways we can be neutral. We may not be dissatisfied, neither we are really motivated. And now we are getting to this picture right over here. So at first our employee can be dissatisfied and demotivated. Well, that would be right over here. So our employee is dissatisfied and let me use different color. So our employee is dissatisfied and also demotivated. So let's say, let's say it's over here, dissatisfied and demotivated. However, when we work with some hygiene factors, which are a company policies, quality supervision, personal life, rate, pay, job security. So if we work with the hygiene factors, hygiene factors, we can decrease the dissatisfaction so we can move towards the neutral state with the dissatisfaction. So let's say if we increase the pay, if we increase the pay, our employee might get much less dissatisfied and he can get to neutral state. And so he will not be dissatisfied, but still not motivated. And what is the problem? These two are distinct. So these two, these two are distinct, distinct. 
And if the employee, thanks to increasing pay, thanks to work with these hygiene factors, gets to neutral state, even when we increase his uh, pay even more, he will not be more satisfied. He will still be neutral. So he will not be dissatisfied, but not motivated as well. In order to increase the satisfaction, so to get from neutral state to a real satisfaction, we have to work with the motivational factors. And these are, for instance, achievement, career advancement, personal growth, job interest, recognition and responsibility. So if we want to increase the satisfaction, we would, let's say, have to increase the, uh, let's say, career advancement, career advancement. And let me state the name of the category. So motivational factors, motivational factors. So now you really can see it. Only then when we uh, really work with the hygiene factors and get to non dissatisfied state, only then we can start to increase the motivation. But you see the difference, the hygiene factors, which are usually uh, accompanied with the dissatisfaction are sort of external. So you can see the external nature here. So these are usually external. So those that lead to dissatisfaction. However, the ones that are uh, connected with dissatisfaction, the motivational factors are much more internal. So internal. So what is important to keep in mind is that these two axes are distinct and separated. And even though, uh, example is the pay, even though you can increase the pay in order to not have dissatisfied workers, it will not work further. Then you will have to work with some motivational, some internal factors to achieve the real satisfaction.